On May 10, 2003, just after midnight, a woman called to 911 and said in a calm voice, I just killed my boys. The operator was taken aback and asked again, Ma'am, what did you do? The woman repeated, Killed my boys. The Laney family lived in eastern Texas in the small village of New Chapel Hill. Wife Deanna and Kit raised three sons, Joshua 8 years old, Luke 6 years old and Aaron, who was only 14 months old. Little is known about Laney's family. They lived rather secluded, practically isolated. They had a large plot of land of 500 square meters, on which the house was located. There were no neighbors nearby. They rarely spoke to relatives. Both spouses were deeply religious, especially Deanna. She was a member of the First Assembly of God Pentecostal community. The woman was always present at the sermons and sang in the choir. Her brother-in-law was the pastor in this church. The children of Deanna and Kit were at home all the time. The woman didn't want to let her children go into society, she was afraid that her boys could be harmed, so they did not attend kindergarten and school. Deanna taught them herself, the boys didn't even have friends. Relatives and acquaintances, who interacted with the Laney family said, that Deanna was an excellent mother. She doted on her children, they became the meaning of life for her. In general, everyone responded positively about the Laney family, describing her as loving and stable. No one could have thought that the love of God could become an obsession and lead to monstrous consequences. Deanna went deeper into religion every year. The people around didn't notice any changes in the behavior of the woman, and didn't even suspect what was going on in her head. Deanna began to hear God, communicate with Him, see secret signs. She believed that she had become the chosen one, but she did not tell anyone about it. The secret could only be revealed when the end of the world came, and this, in her opinion, should have come very soon and she will be one of those who will help save people. At some point, Diana began to imagine the smell of sulfur. He followed her everywhere. The woman thought that this was how God warned her that the devil was next to her. Who wanted to take her soul? Only the Lord could protect Diana and save her soul, but in order for him to do this, she need to prove her devotion and love to him by following all his orders. It all started small. Deanna began to gradually abandon worldly goods, changed her diet, and increasingly secluded with the Bible. Over time, orders from above became more and more harsh and radical. Deanna tried to resist them, but each time, she became ill. And eventually she had to obey. Her sister, Pam, was the first to notice that the woman had changed a lot. She lost a lot of weight, became withdrawn and aloof. Pam tried to figure out what was going on, but Deanna assured her everything was fine. It was May 10, 2003. On this day, the United States celebrates Mother's Day. But no one could have imagined that it would not be a joyful day at all. It will be tragic for the Laney family. A few days before May 10, Deanna received another assignment from God. Deanna sat on the porch of the house and read the Bible. Her sons were playing in the yard. The woman noticed a strange object in the hands of one of the boys. She called out to him and saw that her son was holding a homemade spear. For Deanna, this was a sign. Another test from God to prove her love and devotion to him. She had to kill her children. Then she turned to God and asked how she should do it. The answer was again followed by a sign from above. The youngest son Aaron approached her and gave her a stone. In his other hand he held a toy frog which he held tightly. Deanna regarded this as the fact that God gave her a choice, stab the children with a sharp object, stone them, or strangle them. Another sign helped her make a choice. Returning to the house, the woman stumbled on a stone, and realized that it was he who should become the murder weapon. Deanna resisted for several days. She didn't want to hurt her children. But the longer she resisted orders, the worse her health became. A voice from above convinced the woman that she must sacrifice the lives of her children for the sake of saving her soul and demonstrating sincere love for the Lord. Besides, if she does everything right, the boys will soon be resurrected. 
May 9th was a normal evening. Nothing foreshadowed trouble. The members of the Laney family slept peacefully, but around midnight, Deanna suddenly woke up with some anxiety. She realized that God had awakened her, which means that it was time to fulfill his order. Later, in a conversation with a psychiatrist, a woman described this moment as follows, this feeling struck me. I realized, it's time. Deanna quietly slid off the bed so as not to wake her husband, taking with her the stone hidden in advance. She went to the room of Aaron's youngest son and struck him several times with a stone on the head. When the child began to scream, Deanna covered his face with a pillow. At that moment, Keith entered the room, but his wife assured him that everything was fine, she herself would calm the baby. The man returned to the bedroom. The child soon fell silent. Deanna went to the room of her older sons, woke them up and took them outside. Sleepy Joshua asked, Mommy, what are we doing? The woman replied, this is a test that we must pass. Deanna led her sons into the garden, told Joshua to lie face down on the ground and close his eyes. She led her eldest son Luke to the swing and also told him to lie down on the ground. Then she took a large stone and started hitting the boy on the head. Luke barely managed to let out a scream which was quickly interrupted. Deanna struck blows one after another, she did not know when to stop, so she began to mentally turn to God to give her a sign. Suddenly, the woman saw lightning and realized that Luke was dead. Deanna returned to the garden, went to Joshua, who was lying on the ground, and struck him once with a stone on the head, after which the boy began to resist. Then the woman knelt on his hands and continued to strike until Joshua stopped resisting. When it was all over, Deanna called 911 and said that she had just killed her sons. First responders quickly arrived at Laney's home and began to search the scene. Keith woke up from the noise in the street left the house and saw the police and ambulance workers in the yard. He asked in amazement what was going on. The officer was told that a woman had called 911 from that house and confessed to killing the children. Keith thought it was some kind of mistake. He went to the older son's room, but their beds were empty. Then he entered the room of the youngest son and saw him in the crib with a pillow on his face, the baby did not move. When Keith turned on the light, he saw that Aaron was covered in blood. The man called for help. Fortunately, the boy was alive. He was immediately taken to the nearest hospital. The police found Deanna in the garden. She was still talking to the emergency dispatcher. The woman was without shoes and dressed in white pajamas splattered with blood. She calmly told them where to find her sons Luke and Joshua, but she did not go there herself. In these places, the police found the bodies of boys with crushed heads. Deanna and Kit were taken to the police station to clarify the circumstances. Under interrogation, Keith said he had no idea what happened and why. He said that he woke up that night when he heard Aaron scream and went to his room to calm him down, but his wife was already there, who said that everything was fine, she could handle herself, so Keith calmly returned to bed. The man was released, and the first thing he did was not go home but to his youngest son, who by that time had been transferred to the Dallas Children's Medical Center. The boy was in critical condition. He suffered severe brain damage and lost his sight. The doctors did everything they could, but the boy's future was doomed. He will remain disabled, unable to live independently. Deanna did not resist at all during the interrogation. She explained how it all happened and calmly answered all questions. When asked why she did this, she replied that the Lord ordered. The woman was arrested and placed in a pretrial detention cell. The guard said that there she behaved strangely, as they put it, disorderly. Deanna alternately prayed, sobbed in a fetal position, sang church songs, walked around the cell, or simply sat with a blank look. But sometimes the guard saw a stranger picture. A woman inflicted physical pain on herself, lapped water from a toilet bowl, ate and drank from the floor. This went on for six days until she was sent to a psychiatric hospital for examination.
During a conversation with a psychiatrist, the woman calmly told how and what she did. And then, smiling, she assured the doctor that the boys would soon be resurrected, because she had passed the test and fulfilled what God had told her to do. The only thing that bothered her was that her youngest son Aaron survived, and the Lord considered her devotion insufficient. In order to be rehabilitated in the eyes of God, Deanna was forced to do all those strange things that the guards saw. Talking to the doctors of the psychiatric hospital, Deanna told how God first spoke to her. When asked why she did not share this with loved ones, the woman compared herself to the Virgin Mary, who kept her pregnancy a secret. She considered herself the chosen one, but so far it was impossible to talk about it. Deanna also said that she is the same as Andrea Yates. This woman was also deeply religious, having also killed her children two years earlier. Deanna said that she and Andrea had unified mission, they were chosen by the Lord to save humanity, because the end of the world would come soon. In 2004, Deanna appeared before the court. She was declared insane, so instead of imprisonment, she was sentenced to compulsory treatment in a psychiatric hospital. The doctors who examined Deanna stated that she had been suffering from undiagnosed mental disorder for the past three years. The woman often had hallucinations. But she did not tell anyone about them. The fact that God is talking to her, Deanna spoke several times with the parishioners of the church, which she regularly attended. But no one thought it was strange. Even talk of the end of the world didn't surprise anyone, since these beliefs were an accepted part of their religion. In 2012, after eight years, Deanna was discharged from the hospital, but set some conditions, including constant intake of prescribed medications and no contact with her son Aaron. Doctors who constantly monitored the condition of the woman said that now she is in a clear state of mind, and does not pose a threat to herself or others. Now she is 57 years old, nothing is known about where she is now and how she lives. Deanna's husband Keith filed for divorce in 2008. He took his son and continues to take care of him. After a while, Kit married a second time to a beautiful woman who fully supports him and helps take care of Aaron. Now the guy is 20 years old. Unfortunately, he is completely incompetent. His life is completely dependent on his father. Keith and Deanna saw each other for the last time at the trial. They exchanged letters several times. The man does not want to maintain contact with her. Although he admits that he found the strength to forgive his wife for such a terrible act, he did it more for himself in order to turn this page and be able to live on.